Is it Setubal? Is it Stubal? We're here in the Lisbon region because you guys asked us to explore this city. I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And we're going to figure out how to say the name of the city and then show you what the city has to offer. So let's go. So as you guys know, we are still working on our Portuguese and our pronunciation. So we have asked Leo from Portuguese with Leo, who is a history and culture buff about everything to do with Portugal, to explain us the pronunciation of this city. So take it away, Leo. Olá a todos e bem-vindos ao Expats Everywhere. My name is Leonardo from the YouTube channel Portuguese with Leo. And I'm here to tell you, to teach you how to pronounce the name of the city we're going to learn about today, Stubal. So you've probably noticed with this word and many others in European Portuguese that we tend to not pronounce barely any vowels. There's a reason for that. In European Portuguese, we tend to smush our words together around the stressed syllable. In this case, it's the U with the accent on top, Stubal. So you rush the first part of the word into that U and you also rush out of that U for the second part of the word. So you barely pronounce stu and you barely pronounce bal, stu bal. So you almost only hear the U. Now that we know how to pronounce the name of the city, which is super important if you live here, let's share with you what stu bal has to offer and if it would fit your lifestyle. There's no surprise here that this city has thrived because of the fishing industry. It's right on the water on the Atlantic Ocean and by the Sadu River, and great for seafood. In fact, the city is known for their fried cuttlefish, chocofritu. They're also known for their sardines, but we'll get to the amazing seafood later on. It's not too far from the Ahabida Natural Park, which is a protected park here in Portugal. It does have beaches, but if you're being into hiking or cycling, this is the place to go. The weather is good for outdoor activities. Because of its location, Stubal has a Mediterranean climate. As most places in Portugal, you'll catch some rain in the winter, and it can get chilly with highs only getting up into the 60s and lows into the 40s. The summers are drier with a great breeze that helps cool things off. It normally doesn't get super hot here, with highs sometimes reaching into the low 90s and the average lows being in the 50s. A main area that you can't miss is Avenida Luisa Todi, which is the central avenue of the city. There are loads of restaurants and cafes shaded by the trees. The vibe here is relaxing. Something that you'll definitely notice while down here is a variety of colorfully painted buildings. You won't want to miss Mercado do Livramento, which is a great place for all of those fresh foods. If you head off the avenue, you can wind through pedestrian-only streets and do a bit of shopping. There's also housing available right in this area. So if you want to be super central in the downtown area, this is for you. We'll talk more about neighborhoods and housing prices in a second. When you look at the map, Stubal doesn't look that big, but it's actually pretty spread out. Now the good news is, is that it's easy to walk, but if you don't want to walk, then there's plenty of parking for cars. There's not a metro, but the city is connected by bus. There's also a well-connected train station for getting out of the city. Something we do have to note is a lot of people use the rent-as-you-go electric scooters here, so that could be a good way to get around. Now, when we're talking about the city of Stubal, there are a few places to see, which we'll show you now. But there aren't many places where it's like you have to see this or you can't miss that. But honestly, that gives the city a really livable feel. There aren't loads of tourists flocking to Stubal, so this is a perk for expats wanting to relocate here. There's more tourism outside of Stubal because of the castles, beaches, and natural parks, but there are also little pockets around the municipality that might be worth checking out. Some of these might be more rural and quiet. For example, there are properties being built and renovated in places like Palmela, where there are actually a couple of international schools too, but there's not any in the city of Stubal. A city like Palmela will have a smaller, more Portuguese feel, but has the perk of being in the Lisbon region. For those of you wanting a more expat vibe, these smaller towns or cities probably aren't for you. And honestly, Stubal is probably not for you either, as there aren't loads of English-speaking expats here. 
All right, so let's get back to the actual city of Stubal. Now, while there are many great places around here to live, we can't break them all down. So let's get you guys the cost of living to be in Stubal. Things here will feel more like a Portuguese city. So that means relax and enjoy a coffee outside. But you will still want to visit a few notable places such as the Aqueduct, Fort de Sao Felipe, and Jardim du Bonfim. You can walk around the different squares and catch some views of the older churches, such as the Church of the Monastery of Jesus. But really, you'll want to spend your time socializing at one of the many outdoor restaurants or cafes. That's life, right? Well, if you're living this life of eating out at restaurants and cafes, how much will this cost you? The good news is it will cost you less than Lisbon. You can easily get a plate of the day for under seven euros. We highly recommend getting the plate of the day anywhere in Portugal because of the amount of food you'll get for the price. Here in Stubal, you can enjoy a great meal outside with the lovely breeze for around 10 euros. What should you eat? Fish or anything from the ocean. That's what's big here. Stubal is also very affordable for both renting and buying. You can find a T2 in a central location close to the water for as little as 700 euros a month. You might pay a little more for location, but the best thing about the apartments here is the space. Because of the city being quite spread out, it allows for the apartments to be big. There are deals to be had for those looking to buy. You can find T2 apartments for sale near the water with views for under 300,000 euros. There are high rises all over the city, which can give you the opportunity to have a beautiful view, but not be paying over the odds for it. If you move away from the water, and a little inland, you can find apartments for even less. So there are deals here for sure. And the reason for that, well, we might be letting the cat out of the bag, but it's because there aren't loads of expats here, yet. This is why the cost of living here is very affordable. Prices aren't inflated. We do want to note that it's probably best to have a car though, so definitely factor in that cost. The car will be good for around the city if you want it, but more for heading out to some of the other beaches nearby or to see the natural beauty and architecture outside of the city. Stubal is a hidden gem that hasn't been exposed to too many tourists. People are living normal lives here, so it's not uncommon to see families playing in the park or having a birthday party. Because the city isn't overrun with tourists and it doesn't have that resort feel, you feel like you're living in Portugal. Now the cool thing is that they do speak English here in Stubal, but practice your Portuguese. They'll love that too. So if you want a lower cost of living, but not too remote, you want to feel like you're living in Portugal and not a transplant of where you left, you want to be by the beach and possibly have a stellar view of it without breaking the bank, then Stubal could be for you. But is it for us? All right, it's opinion section time about Stubal. But I gotta know, how many times did we make the mistake between Setubal and Stubal? A bunch, like way too many. Even <laughs> though we know how it should be said, we were taught how it's said, still, the way it looks, uh, it's a tough one. It is a tough one. So if you guys don't know us already, uh, I'm Josh and this is Kaylee and we've been expats for over 10 years now. We've lived in five different countries abroad and we just love this stuff. We love helping people move abroad. So let's talk about the city that we're currently in and we wanna thank you guys so much for sending us here because it's been a pleasure. So I've been going first on this opinion section a lot, so I'm gonna have you go first. What do you think of the city? Yes, yeah, so I really like it. Um, I actually took an impromptu trip here and um, I did that a week before Kaylee made it here and I was like, oh, she's gonna like this, she's gonna like it a lot. Here's what I like about it. Mm. I like that the downtown area is very walkable and there's quite a bit of that downtown area that's walkable. But I also like that there's like this roughness to it. I mean, the downtown area is nice, but in the downtown area, there's like this kind of rough bit about it. It's, it's a little rugged. It's a little, not scary rugged, but you can walk down these little narrow alleyways and it's cool. Maybe like, not it, polished is what you're thinking? It's not like polished, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Well, that's kind of the vibe that I, I seem like you were going for, yeah. especially because we just came from Cascais, which would be more polished, I, I think. So it's 
It's not as polished, yeah? Yeah, for sure. So I really like that. I, I noticed that the prices were a bit cheaper, like in restaurants, and then I started looking at how much housing cost is, and I was like, okay, I like this, because we're not on some like super high mm -hmm. salary or anything. Uh, we just transitioned into doing content creation alone. So we're not on these big high salaries, you know, we're trying to make it be ballers on a budget. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's kind of why I like Stubel. Mm -hmm. So it's funny because when Josh came here before me, he was kind of talking it up. And we got here and I was a bit like, meh, <laughs> like it's okay, like nothing spectacular. So my first, I think, 48 hours, I was like, it's not bad, it's not good either. I just was a bit indifferent to it. Um, I actually liked Kashkaish better coming from there. Then we spent a little more time here and it started to grow on me a bit more. So what's interesting is there aren't a lot of English speaking expats here. You'll get some Spanish, you'll get some French. Uh, the Portuguese will come here on vacation, especially from Lisbon. Maybe they have a second home in the area or something like that. But there's not a lot of English speaking expats, so it's very Portuguese. And this is a good thing though. I'm not saying that as a negative. I think this is a good thing. We like it because we're working on our Portuguese. So. <laughs> it's, yes, and, and they still speak English, but you can ask them to switch back to Portuguese and they'll switch back and they'll help you. So that's really nice. So if you're looking for more of a Portuguese feel, then Stubal would definitely be for you. I think that it's uh, up and coming. So at first I was a bit like, oh, I'm not too sure. It's okay. Nothing incredible. But the people have started to grow on me uh, as we've checked out the other areas outside of the center. That has grown on me. There's the beach, there's the uh, natural park. And so actually, I really like it. I really like it here now. <laughs> yes. So I've got to ask you the question, would you expat that? Yes, I would expat that. Now, the only thing that is a bit difficult is you would need a car. You could stay in the center area and be okay, but if you want to go anywhere else outside of Stubal and especially the center, because it's actually pretty spread out, then you would need a car. And it's not super well connected to Lisbon. There is a train that goes there, but it's a commuter train, so it's pretty far away. It's almost an hour on the train. You have buses and everything, but all of those are quite irregular. So I would say I would expat that, but maybe for just a few months. It gets quite busy actually in the summer, but it might be a nice winter spot to escape a little bit of the cooler uh, weather in the north. But I, I, would, I would expat this here. What about you? That's nice. Yes, I would expat that for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say um, that... I don't think that you necessarily need a car unless you're really, really wanting a car so that you can explore more of Portugal. I think that it's well connected enough to where if you want to be able to get to Lisbon and take a train um, anywhere in the country or to get to that airport, or you want to maybe take the bus to Lisbon, I think the bus express bus is about 40 minutes, it's possible. Now, obviously, we've talked about this in other videos, you will be at the mercy of the, the timetable. Mm -hmm. That kind of, you know, that kind of stinks having to always worry about that instead of just being able to hop in your car and go. But you do have the ability to walk this city. Um, things are anywhere between five and 30 minutes walking distance, pretty much mm -hmm. like wherever you are. Uh, it's pretty and then, spread out and, though. and then there are some buses. So if you're on the outskirts, which we don't recommend being on the outskirts if you want to live here in Stubal, we recommend actually being in the city center. It's just more lively. It's just going to be a better lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, but you do have buses that will take you to the center. So that's cool, right? Right. I just think it would be way more convenient <clears throat> to have a car um, unless you want to just yeah stay in the center area. But to get to some of the beaches that are really nice, the car is just much more convenient. So you could do it without a car, but I think you'd have a better experience with a car. Real quick, massive shout out, and this is a big thanks to all of our patrons on Patreon. You guys have like literally made this financially possible for us that we can have a team here and we can be traveling the country and doing this. So thank you guys so much for the support. If anyone else out there that's not a patron would like to support us, there is a link on our page, uh, on this page right here. You guys can check that out and support us. If not, just watching this video is a huge support. So if you guys wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button and just joining this journey with us, we appreciate it. Now let's get moving. Bye. Bye.